Okay, Tyler Fredrickson. Wow, I I really can't believe that Carolyn turned on you like that. I had you guys pegged to be the final two. So, from your perspective, what happened? I do. I just want to let you know that like, I've been following your website all season, and you guys have said like some incredible things about me. I really appreciate it. So. Oh yeah, that's cool. complimentary, and I'm right uh, there with you, dude. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Why'd she do that? Well, I don't know, but you know what? She drew a heart on the parchment, so that makes it all better. You know what? I don't buy that for a second. People draw things on parchment so that when they get back to camp, they go, all right, so the, all right I'm going for Tyler tonight. You're going to see a heart on the parchment, okay? That's what you're going to see. When they get back to camp, they go, see the heart? Okay, so you know it was me. And it's all, like, it's all, I mean, maybe it was sweet, but it's it's all smoking <laughs> here. Don't, don't give me that crap. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I was actually thinking, oh, no, Tyler might be eliminated because Carolyn's going to forget to bring her idol to tribal council. But, wow, I was wrong. She, you ended up being eliminated because she turned on you. Yeah, she actually forgot to bring it to tribal council or didn't bring it to tribal council to council before, where Shereen and Mike went off on me. And we're like, we're going for him. And suddenly when, like, I'm the big, huge target sitting in the room and, like, I expect her to stand up and go, like, I got him in this big heroic moment. And she doesn't do that at all. We get back to the camp and I'm like, are you, I just escaped barely with my head intact. Are we not in this together? Oh, no, we're, we're, we're together. I just forgot to bring it. And wow. it's when I realized, like, she is not thinking about me at all. So i got to figure out a way to start to eliminate her. And that mm-hmm. began a process of lining up my ducks in a row to get rid of Carolyn last night. But that all falls flat when she wins immunity and changes everything. Wow. Um, when Jeff was reading the votes, did you know at that moment that she turned on you, or did you find out later? No idea. No idea. No, I suggest reading the votes. It's all like, what? My name? Where's Dan? No, I'm, I'm walking now, and I'm putting my torch in the thing, and he's not. No, no. <laughs> if I knew, if I had just the slightest inclination, if there was a whisper that these six were coming for me, I would mm-hmm. do. I would have blown it up. I would have been like, here's the idol. I mean, it wasn't the moment that people were waiting for. Like, I was just slow and quiet yeah. and all and, like, calculating markets. I would have blown, this is the advantage, this is the core four. Mike, you want to team up right now? We'll just win immunities out and just battle to the end. Like, what do you want to do? I mean, it mm-hmm. would have been, it was what I was just being, it was like in Braveheart when all the horses were chopping down the guys. And he's like, hold, and then they all raise the stake. Like, I was ready to raise the stakes. But if it happens, you get blindsided. You know, should I have been more aware and watching the edit back last night? Like, was it clear that people were coming for me? Well, yeah, maybe when you're, like, looking at behind the scenes and things that you can't perceive. The reality was Dan's advantage was dangerous. Everyone should have known that. Everyone should have anticipated it. We should have gone after it. We didn't. They went after what they thought was a more dangerous person with only one vote. Carolyn now can't duplicate her votes, which is what she's been doing all season. Um, That hurts her. Dan still has a duplicated vote with less people to vote against him. That helps him. Um, Carolyn, I mean, who's going to beat Mike in challenges? Maybe Carolyn, but that kind of hurts the whole group. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. where do things go from here? I don't know. It's going to be a mad scramble. People got to, like, regroup. Right. And usually the audience kind of has a leg up on what's going on, but I feel like with Carolyn's betrayal, we were just as shocked as you were. <laughs> we had no idea what was going on there. Interesting. So I, I, it's hard for me to watch because I'm like, oh, in about 20 minutes, I'm going home. Okay, in about 10 minutes, the vote will be right. Mm-hmm. All right, not much fun to rest in. Um, But, you know, I watched with about 80 people, and it was a very close oh. group of friends and family, which I haven't really had that party uh, this mm-hmm. season. And I wanted people to, like, be around it. I didn't want to just sit in my house and kind of cry. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. I wanted people I wanted to share it with people kind of walk this journey through with me. And it seemed like there's, like, people were gasping and, People were crying last time. It was like, you know, we've all kind of gone through a journey. and It did seem like people were surprised, just like you said. What was this week like, knowing your episode was coming up? Um, were you getting more and more just, like, antsy and aggravated? Like, oh, my gosh, it's finally coming. It's finally coming. You're going to actually see what happened, why you were eliminated. So what was that like, this build up for this episode? It was bittersweet. I mean, what an amazing experience. What a run, like 12 or 14 episodes. I mean, I'm mm. blown away. The relationships I have from this, like the Birdie 30, we're like we're actually a really tight knit group. There's a, there's a few cracks right now, but like, you know, we'll work through those as well. But we're probably the cl- closest cast in the history of the show. 
Um, and so I've been able to travel all around the country and, and share these adventures with everybody, watching really, really, you know, monumental episodes in each of these people's lives as they get voted out and, and sharing that with them. And now all of a sudden it's my turn. And I wanted to make sure I cleared the air with everybody. So I got on the phone with Mike and Sierra and Carolyn, who I talk to constantly. I just said, all right, guys, cut the chase. What really went down? Because I want to be able to represent that well. And, mm-hmm. you know, not just follow what the edit has been seen. But I'll tell you, like, last night was, you know, it was, again, it was bittersweet. I had, a, I had a great outpouring of love. And, you know, 31 coming out overshadows sort of my experience a little bit. The Ponderosa video didn't wasn't quite what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a little more goofy and fun. It showed some of my personality a bit. It ended up being more about what CBS has been focusing on all season. But, you know what, like, this too will pass. In, in three mm-hmm. weeks, everyone's going to be talking about 31, and I'll just have these relationships and these memories and a few of these episodes to share with my friends and family for life, and that's a good thing to have. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, you were so close to winning that immunity challenge. How hard was that one, holding on to that rope? It looked really painful. I hate those stupid endurance challenges. Like, I hate <laughs> They're not the way I grew up. They're not, I, don't, I, didn't, I don't have the Joe England kind of, like, mentality, the Aussie. Not. Like, those guys are built for that stuff. I'm built for, like, you know, football, soccer, basketball, things, stuff on solid ground and, move, you know, running and jumping and climbing. Like, I was waiting for, like, when are we going to climb the huge staircase and, you know, that kind of stuff, um, speed work. And, yeah, I mean, I, at that point I had lost, I had lost 26 pounds. It was about 30 pounds that I had lost since I touched down on an island. So I was, I mean, I was really hurting. You know, you're hungry, you're sore, you're beat up. I'm taller than she is. I weigh a lot more. You know, mm-hmm. um, a woman, is, a man has never, I don't think, ever won that challenge in the actual game. So, it, you yeah. know, you can only do what you only do so much. And I, I got to the point where I couldn't hold on anymore. She was looking great. I turned to her. I go, how you doing? She goes, I'm great. I'm like, okay. So <laughs> you know, essentially we're in this together now. I no longer come out to you, so let's get back to our core four and let's work it out. And I had to let go. And, um, you know, I don't think I could have held on much longer, even if I knew I was going on that night. It's just sometimes it is what it is, and it's Survivor. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't know if you're aware, but it was actually Rodney's birthday. Um, if you had won the reward, would you have given it up to Rodney? Oh, jeez. This is – see, Dan <laughs> chose the, the colored rock that allowed him to be captain. And his decision was, I'm bringing Rodney on my team, because that way if we win, he goes. And if we lose, I don't have to give anything up. Um, you know, I certainly wouldn't have given up my thing, because I feel like Rodney can get pissed at me all he wants. I can come back and be the relationship. I'll be like, bro, calm down. You're good. Like, we're going to get through this. Like, just focus on the vote. We can eat when we get home. Um, I felt like I had the ability to talk through a lot of these things with, like, you know, voting for Dan. Well, sure, no problem. You know, calming down Carolyn through a lot of her paranoia. Easy. Um, Rodney would have been in, one and the same, but you know he also came up with this plan that he was going to be really pissed, throw the suits fit, go after Carolyn, and then essentially say, "I want to quit." And he ran mm-hmm. for the, ran with this for two straight days, including like a rainy, pouring down day, and all in the all in the hopes of like we get the tribal. And he'd be like, "I'm going to quit tonight," so just write down my name, and my, Mike would go, "Oh, everybody's writing out Rodney's name. I don't have to play my idol." And we all like put six votes on Mike. It was ridiculous. We let him do his own thing. It ended up becoming like the fulcrum of the show, which is mm-hmm. kind of ridiculous because nobody really considered it. Nobody really gave it much of a thought when we were out there. Um, but he's good TV. He's really good TV. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. <laughs> um, I was going to say, like, did you did you guys ever just consider voting him out? I mean, once you knew Mike was going to play as idol, like, did, did you ever just think, well, maybe we should get Rodney out. He already has the worst birthday ever, so voting him out won't make it any worse. No, because he was like, I'm going to play like I want to quit, and I wanted to go pick Rodney to the end. Will and Rodney were my final three. Rodney was on most everybody's final three. Uh-huh. Rodney didn't really do much. He didn't really make a whole lot of moves. I know that the episodes are kind of showing him to be slightly strategic. It's just more over the top, you know, a way to, like, cut to the chase. Rodney wasn't leading mm-hmm. much of a, an alliance at all. And I thought I was leading the alliance. Then again, I'm not at home, and he's still out there. So what do I really know? But the reality was most people, you know, if you played a, a cool, calm, and collective sort of game, you wanted Roddy next to you. 
and because he didn't. If you play an opposite type game, in which case you may not want Rodney, Rodney next to you. So, but for the most part, Rodney was bigger than everybody and more annoying than everybody. So take him. Mm-hmm. If you could analyze your own game, what was your best strategic move? My best strategic move. Um, you know, like for me, it was just it was relating. It was relating. Everybody's looking. Everybody, everybody wants to be heard. Everybody wants. Everybody needs a shoulder to cry. Everybody needs an ear. And you got all these crazy people from all walks of life who are in insecure, paranoid, panic. You, know, you, you, you just you become the rock, and you become. You become their best friend. You become the necessity. You become somebody who can, can skirt through a lot of stuff. And uh, I, for me, that was, I went out there. I thought I was going to be larger than life. I was going to talk a big game. I was going to rock and roll. And I realized that there's all these people who all they want to do is talk. All they want to do is be listened to. And I realized, if I just shut my mouth and listen to them, they're going to tell me everything. They tell me who they want to go for, who they don't like, what they like, mm. who they trust, who they don't trust. It's, it's, it became, and that's why I think it crept up on everybody. I think it crept up on people watching the show. Wait, Sierra's talking about Tyler being strategic and, like, he's scheming and he's, like, physical. Why are we not seeing this in the edit? Well, those things take time. Those things take weeks to cultivate. You don't have that kind of storytelling ability. This is a miniseries. Like, you got 42 minutes, and 15 of those are covering three days' worth of blah, blah. Right. That's all you got. So, you know, the stuff I did with Dan and Mike and, and Carolyn behind the scenes, it's really difficult, and, and honestly, it's not as explosive as people fighting and, you know, bullying and calling each other names. That is more exciting. I get it. I totally get it. As a producer and a writer, like, I focus on it, too. Unfortunately, I just feel like that kind of stuff has overshadowed a lot of fun in the strategy that better players were playing, um, and it's a, it makes the season a little bit of a letdown. Well, I love this season. This is one of the best seasons in a long time. The Dirty 30, I don't know how you guys all got cast. From You came from all different walks of life. I guess, you know, final question, what what did you make of the white-collar, no-collar, blue-collar twist? Um, was it a good twist for the show? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I thought it was cool. I thought it was a little bit of a representation of America, which is kind of fun. I feel like Americans, can, when it's like, you know, brawn, beauty, brains, you tune in and you go, well, I don't know, I'm kind of all of those things. But I feel like for the most part, people can kind of sort of pick in their own lives who they like, and so maybe it's easier to find people or teams to root for initially. Uh, when I got out there, I was like, I don't care. Like, put me on whatever. So I'm going to fire and get water, which, of course, we couldn't. But, you know, I actually see myself as a bit of a no-caller. Um, initially, I was supposed to be cast on the show as a no-caller. And, like, that was going to be that was gonna be my – that's how I live my life. and. But I'm also, like, I, I get down and dirty in, in the nitty-gritty all the time. I'm very blue-collar in my work ethic. But I also know how to lead a boardroom and be an executive and a pitch and run a meeting and, you know, deal with people from that side of the spectrum. So I'm like, hey, I can do any of these things. I can get along with all of these people. And I feel like that's one of the reasons I went far. It's one of the reasons why I was able to relate to so many people. It's one of the reasons, the reasons why so many people from different walks of life from all across the country came up to me and kind of, you know, spilled their problems. Mm. Well, Tyler, great watching on the show. We we wish you had made it a little farther, but hey, you know, top seven was that right? Top seven? That's not bad. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Marcus. I, yeah, I wish I could go a little bit further too, but he said, "Ah, said, All right. Well, we'll see you at the reunion. Uh, okay, I'll be there. Okay. Bye bye.